released in 2022. This Agent 47 from the Hitman series is the latest to join Master Team's unlicensed video game lineup. Having some previous entries from The Last of Us and Witcher series, I'm quite taken aback by their variety so far. Starting with head sculpts, there are no two ways about it. It is absolutely breathtaking. There are a lot of subtle details that easily make this head sculpt one of Master Team's best entries to date. The proportions and depth speak volumes here, as the pronounced cheekbones and chiseled jawlines are some of 47's defining features. As such, natural shadows from basically any lighting angles will bring out even more of what is already an amazing likeness. The barcode tattoo on the back of the head did not go amiss. Even the numbers underneath are discernible, though the tattoo seems to be a little off-center on my copy. Bummer. This suit is 47's signature apparel in almost every game. Though the first thing that stood out to me, other than the fact that the subtlety is bang on, is that the top half feels a little baggy overall, as if the shirt and blazer are one size too big. But this could be for compensating the rise in the fabric when you get 47 in a pose. The blazer itself is neat and tidy, with collars and lapels that are perfectly sewn in place, complete with decorative buttons and pockets. This game accurate shimmery red lining, and these rear double vents, the sleeves are just the right lengths, such that the cuffs from the shirt underneath is always protruding just the proper amount. There's no hidden chest holster which is probably for the better. The collar on the shirt sits really well, but it's slightly too big in my opinion. The rubber band on the tie is kinda loose, so it always appears as if it's pulled down. I'm not sure if it's intentional, but the tie is way too rigid to fall naturally unless I tuck the tail inside the pants. The upside is that this actually blends really well with those dynamic poses. Then there's the typical leather belt with a working buckle, followed by a pair of slacks that are beautifully matched to the blazer. And lastly, we have a pair of mid-calf black socks. While the dress shoes really shouldn't be a big deal here, I nonetheless found it interesting that Master Team seem to have reused the same mold as the Hot Toys John Wick. Even the patterns on the outsoles are identical, and we'll soon find out that this isn't the only borrowed element in this release. But first, the articulations. To put it bluntly, they're nothing out of the ordinary, and they're subject to the usual limits due to the costume. And just like every other six scale suits out there, this one also doesn't hold up well at those extreme angles. But then again, it's not like 47's mastery in subtlety would lend himself into big action poses anyway. And as mentioned before, the suit's slightly bigger size does cope well with arm movements from those mild poses, and almost like 47 himself, it's in the subtle poses where the figure truly shines. Now, for the accessories, they are among some of the most iconic in the Hitman series, along with some strange pieces that are borrowed elsewhere. First, we have this black ICA-19 that is fully sculpted with no moving parts, but complete with a removable magazine and a silencer option to recreate that iconic look. I love this fiber wire, which is arguably the most quintessential assassination tool. Though sadly, none of the hand parts are designed specifically for this tool. And speaking of which, the hands are very loose on my figure, to the point where even the cuffs of the blazer can easily knock them off the wrist joints. Hopefully this isn't a widespread issue. Next, we have the most god-tier weapon of all video games, that is the, uh, homing ICA briefcase. It actually looks pretty generic, with none of the surface grooves and thickness that it had in the game. But honestly, I'm just glad there's at least a briefcase in this release. And finally, we have this oddball of a sniper rifle, because Master Team seems to have just used an off-the-shelf item from another vendor. In fact, I think I found the exact one too. It's this ZY Toys Mark 13 Black Sniper, based on the real-life AWM Sniper. Everything is exactly the same right down to the extra goodies, such as these three pieces of die-cast ammo, this high-tech pair of binoculars, and this anemometer for wind readings. And by extension, this AWM sniper is brimming with details, like this adjustable chin rest on a foldable stock, an additional option for the barrel if you don't want the muzzle break, a spring-loaded collapsible bipod with retractable legs, a removable magazine, a movable bolt-action lever, and a built-in rail system for mounting this two-part combiner scope. I don't think 47 used any of these in the game, but regardless, this could loosely pass for the Jaeger 7, and having a sniper in 47's hands feels right at home. And finally for the size comparison, here we have the other legendary assassin in a suit, John Wick by Hot Toys. Thanos wouldn't have even needed the Infinity Stones if he had just hired these two for his quest. Next we have some previous works by Master Team, starting with Jill Valentine from RE3 Remake, Ellie from The Last of Us Part 2, 
and Geralt of Rivia from Witcher 3. Unlike some other third-party brands, Master Team had been pretty consistent on both the quality of the head sculpts and the overall figure sizes, which is why I'm pretty stoked for their upcoming Siri and Lara Croft. So there you have it, the 1-6 scale Agent 47 by Master Team. On the surface, there's really nothing groundbreaking about this release. It's just a bald guy in a suit. But I'd argue that this brilliant head sculpt is one of the finest examples of how a video game character can be perfectly translated into this format. It's as if 47 had walked straight out of a TV screen to plot your murder. And that nothing is flashy about this character is exactly why it's so appealing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.